Hey everyone, you're watching VGO40 and this is VGO Girl and today we are going to take a look at Frost Moon Observatory in Adventure Mode and this is a guild dungeon and um, I can only do a point of view from a tank. Um, I can tell you what's going on with the DPS but it's kind of hard to see in the background. So if you want a really good shot of uh, the DPS point of view, I'm going to put a link to Bernie's Green Life's video in the description so you can check it out to see what the DPS is doing um, from their point of view but I will at least go through and explain what the DPS should be doing. Okay first thing is set up so you're going to want to organize your raid with four healers and down each row is the DPS that goes with that healer. Now this is actually quite important. In the fifth row we have our tanks and the healers that are with the tanks. Now the setup for where everybody goes is important for this boss because you're going to be broken up into five different groups. Now taking a look at the room you can see there's a number two and a number three on that side and a number one and a number four on the other side. So there's four markers, two on the left and two on the right. Each of the healers will get a colored marker above their head. You can see the, them running around here. The purple will go with the purple number one. The um, green will go with the green number two, uh, orange with the orange number three, and white with the white number four. So the reason they have this is because during the boss there's a section where there's like these green uh, maelstroms uh, they're like kind of like um, puddles with s circles in the on the floor not like the puddle but next to me um, and those you're gonna have to have four players on in order to get rid of those so it's important here at this point where you're going to follow your group leader over to those sections so you can stomp those out and you ha that's why you have your four groups and then the fifth group is the tanking group and there is one in the middle where the tanks are that they need to stomp out as well. Okay, here I am from the other side and um, we put a yellow moon at the boss um, and that is where the tanks will fight the boss. So um, here we are, we have three tanks and if you're a tank you're going to want to switch off with the other two tanks at um, 10 stacks and so here we're we're going to tank the boss here and he's a caster boss so he doesn't move very well um now first you can see kind of that yellow cone of damage that comes towards the tanks here you want to make sure that that is always facing the tanks so the boss has to be facing away from the rest of the room and here we have these green circles just spread out and then go ahead and we also have share damage. Now I believe the share damage, you cannot stack them on top of each other. There's two, um, you need to do one kind of with the range DPS further away and the other with the melee and tanks close. So those need to be separate and I don't think that you can be in one and then the other. So there's two separate um, share damages and you can kind of see in the back, there was a red text box, I think from the other share damage. Okay, next is the maelstrom phase, and you can see the yellow circles on the ground, and now you'll get these, you can't really see with mine, you can see it in the background, they're like um, green with the green circles in the middle. Those are what you need four players to jump on, and there's groups of them in the back, um, and each section is kind of going to their own assigned area to um, stamp those out. Okay, up next is the Interrupt Demon Hound's Quake attack, and you'll see these like big dog-like things come out, and it's important for DPS to go on those and switch to interrupting them, because if they are not interrupted, they'll do a large AoE that will wipe the group. Now, you can bring those over to the tanks, so that the tanks will take them and... Um, when you do area of effect sort of things on the boss, it'll also hit those guys, but you do not need to worry about having the tanks switch over to those. Now, um, as you can see here, we've got our share damage, but also there's a green puddle now under the boss. The boss does drop these green puddles. It is hard to move the boss, so just kind of move over as best you can so that uh, you can still get to him. We kind of move to the side a little just to kind of allow people to get in there to do um, damage. Now here again is a maelstrom 
round. Now you can see that the boss has a shield on him while you're stamping out these maelstroms. So, um, and there is one under him, so it's important for the tank group to all be together on there as well. Um, so go ahead and get those off and it's just kind of a repeat from there. Okay, let's take a look at the tanks really quick. Um, you can see that Drizzt has more than 10 stacks. So it's, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go next on tanking and you can see the tanking or the stacks in the box next to my name so that you can see once I get to 10, um, Kilachandra should be up next to go ahead and take aggro and then get up to 10 stacks on her. If you rotate between the three, it'll give you time for the next person to clear their ta their their stacks. Okay, besides the stacks next to the tank's name, you can also see the stacks below uh, with the counter uh, for shadow penetration. And this long counter is why it's really ideal to have three tanks up rotating between them. Now in the background, we have the dogs again, which you're going to need to um, interrupt. I don't think they do much damage to the DPS, so you don't have to worry about them so much running around as much as just making sure that you're interrupting them and taking them down pretty quick. Uh, again, here you can see all the red text in the background. That was from the share damage. Uh, and I think up next is the maelstroms again. Okay, so I think that's it for this boss. It's really just um, for if you're a tank, your main focus is going to be um, to make sure to rotate between the tanks. Uh, just move the boss over a little if you need to, but most importantly is to keep that boss facing away from the raid. And also when you have that maelstrom section under where the boss originally was standing that you all go into that. Uh, if you're DPS, you have a lot of jobs to do. It's mainly uh, follow your healer leader over to your maelstroms to stomp out the correct ones together as a group as quickly as you can. Then when the dogs come up, you need to make sure to interrupt them and DPS them down. And when um, the share damage comes up, you're either going to take it to the melee group or to the ranged group. So, um, and the healers, besides just trying to keep everybody alive, um, you're going to need to make sure that you're leading your groups over to the maelstroms when it's the appropriate time. So uh, I think that's pretty much it for this fight. There's a lot going on. It, you just gotta kinda get in there and, and give it a try. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. If you're having problems with this raid and you have questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will try to get back to you right away. Um, also, definitely check out the Bernie's Green Life uh, video in the um, description because he has a really good point of view uh, in his video from the DPS point of view so you can really see what the DPS is doing in that. Um, and hopefully you ha found this helpful. Uh, you're watching VGO40 and this is VGO Girl and we will see you next time in World of Kings.